Hey, welcome back to Let's Talk Bach. If you're new to the channel, uh, please subscribe. I have some cool scoreboards to show uh, demonstrating the panda chase strategy that I've come up with. Uh, it's very simple, very straightforward. Don't forget that luck is involved. If you're new to the game of Easy Baccarat, this might not be the video for you. Um, I will have future videos explaining the game, how to deal it, how to play it, um, the rules, the hit schedule, and all that. If you have no idea what that means, and once again, this might not be the video for you. So. Uh, I'd like to make a few shout outs. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to take two slides that I took um, of screenshots at work at an actual casino of actual scoreboards so you can see the strategy pretty much uh, in action. I want to answer a question that w came up in one of the comments um, from one of the subscribers that I'd like to shout out. And the question will involve the strategy itself or at least i've assumed that it involves the strategy's um, ruling which is to bet 10 hands on panda as soon as we see a player and then a tie hit um now once again you're still gonna ha have to get lucky this is for purely entertainment purposes if you want to have fun playing the easy bach route you want to learn a little something please subscribe we're gonna have a lot more videos i'm gonna be taking a screenshot of a couple of shoes one a losing shoe and two a winning shoe we're going to compare them day to day and i'm going to have a shoe or two shoes of the day two slides of the day whatever you want to call it so stick with me and hit the bell that way you're notified when those videos get posted and if you're interested in anything casino gaming and strategy uh, then this is the channel for you all right here we go let's get into it guys all right first shout out is to not sure how to say his name but maybe cole Cole with the division sign and the H, he said, keep it up. And I was all, thanks, Dad. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But it was it really meant a lot to me because when I said thank you and I appreciate the comment, so I scrolled down and I saw that they said they'd been a follower since the beginning. Um, and wanted to say thanks. Shouts out to you. I appreciate it. You've probably seen the, the many changes that the channel's gone through when it comes to the name, um, the, the logo, everything. So, yeah, thanks so much. The second shout out I want to make is to a looks like a company called ATS Landscaping and Property Maintenance for all your landscaping and property needs. Check them out. Just kidding. That was a free advertisement. Hope you appreciate that. <laughs> anyway, thank you for commenting. He asked the question that we're going to dive into is, so how often would you say does the panda come on hand 10 or 11? Does he mean, he, she, the company, mean hand 10 or 11 of a shoe in Easy Bakra or on hand 10 or 11 of the panda chase strategy being as though he commented on a panda chase strategy video i assumed it was about that so i answered the question as as follows well i basically won't get into it on the comment section you can look up that yourself if you want um so we're going to get into it in the couple of slides that i have here but first first we're going to reiterate the strategy so when a player wins, followed by a tie win, we're gonna begin betting one, five, or 25, or whatever your bankroll allows. If you have a huge bankroll, 100,000, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna take on this 100,000, I'm gonna go to Easy Bakura, I'm gonna start playing. Let's look up some winning strategies. Oh, hey, there's the Panda Chase strategy. That looks like a lot of bogus shit. <laughs> well, here's what I have to kind of debunk the people that are saying that it's buffoonery. Um, because like I said, it's for entertainment. You want to have fun playing the game, you want to win, and you want to, you're going to have fun when you win. When you lose, it's rough. When you stick to a strategy and you lose, you're like, all right, didn't work out for me this time. You know, if you're a poker player, you know that you have a winning and losing percentage. But as long as you can keep that winning percentage just over the losing percentage, you'll be what's called a winning player. And you'll profit, right? Simple? Not so much. Well, the strategy's simple, so let's go into it. Once again, player wins followed by a tie win we're gonna bet panda for the next 10 hands straight we're not gonna fluctuate the bet i'm gonna make a, no a video in the future that's gonna talk about a progressive bet and i want to see what that looks like because it wasn't too much more when it came out to the bet starting at five dollars and ending at fifty dollars uh, but we're gonna highlight in this video does the panda land how often on the 10th or 11th hand we're gonna focus on the 10th but sticking back or going back to this strategy, if another tie hits, but only after it hits after a player wins, sorry, the tie wins after a player, then we'll restart the count to 10. So if we've got player followed by tie, you'll see in the slide, 
player followed by tie and it goes one two three or one two three four or however many hands until it goes player tie again in the middle or in between that 10 original hands then we'll restart that hand count. and i loved it because it's dangerous because i've seen shoes where it's chained the majority of the shoe gets stuck unlucky um i've seen other shoes where it's chained once twice then bang a whole string of pandas and it's like damn what if you gave up what if he's just like, man, this, this string is like last you. I, I lost a hell of a lot. I'm stuck. I don't want to stick and discipline myself to these strategies. So you walk away. Then you go, maybe you have a drink at the bar, and you hear everybody cheering and rooting, hooting and hollering. Oh, my God, these animals are hitting. And you're like, oh, they're... I was just there. But anyways, it's happened so many times, especially to myself. That's why I have the story to tell. But we'll restart that bet. And we won't double up the bet. Like I said, we won't fluctuate the bet. We won't try to lower it or raise it. We'll just stick with what's good with our bankroll. I prefer $25 every hand. At the end of the 10 hands, it'll be a simple $250. And um, I always say, I put this in at the end, if a panda hits before the 10 hands is counted to, make your choice on continuing betting. I say continue betting for the reason in these slides that I'll show you. Um, okay. So this first slide, old slide from an older video, check it out. I think I'll think the link is up in the description, uh, at the end maybe. Um, so it showed, you, you can see a blue dot, then a green dot at the very far left, that's the hand history, and then it went one, two, three, we count the hands all the way up to the 10th hand. It hit on the fourth, sixth, and what do you know, the 10th hand. So I'm not gonna get into the math. We've done that plenty of times what it comes out to, to whether you bet $1, $5, $25, or the max bet of 100 in most, you know, lower, uh, what do you call it, lower stakes games. You know, if it's a high limit game, then I'm sure the max bet on those bonuses would be a lot bigger. So, uh, to wrap that slide up, boom, there's proof the 10th hand. We're gonna get into this slide right here. And as you can see, it chained a little bit. I'm gonna show you what it looks like with all the detail. So the pink boxes are when the condition was met. Blue, then tie, we start betting 10 hands. As you can see, when the very, to the far left, not the far left, but kind of more in the middle of this slide, it went, you know, the pink little rectangle around that. And then it went one hand, two hands, three hands, and on the fourth hand, the condition was met again. So we restarted the 10. And then as you can see, it went two, four, five, six, and on the seventh hand, you can see the condition was met, and then blue, and then tie condition was met for that final time around the pink rectangle. And all those numbers represent is the one through 10 hands. And then this two, the two red circles signify that it was hand 64 and 65. And of course, the last panda was on hand 65, which if we did the see the arrows, that landed perfectly on hand 10. Now, nothing special about it. It was just that it does happen from one through 10 hands, which I was ecstatic. Now, if we did the math on that, that might come out to a little closer to even, but point being, stay disciplined, stick to the strategy, and you may come out even or on top. Awesome, right? Um, so, next slide, next shoe. This was right before I left. I clocked out, boom, I saw it. I was like, hold on, guys. Everybody remove your faces from the picture. I can't have this as per instructed and permitted to do so. So we're gonna go to the next slide where it's edited. You can see the rectangle, the bigger pink rectangle where the condition was met. Then you started betting. There's three reds, then a blue, then a red, then a blue, which is three, six on the seventh. And then the eighth hand, the condition was met again. We restart the 10. So. Left the arrows out this time, but you can see the numbers, and you can see the panda was hit on the third, ninth, and what do you know, the tenth hand again. So as I'm as I'm at work and I'm looking at all the shoes, I've seen plenty of losing shoes, which is why I said for entertainment, for luck, for having fun, you still have to factor in all those things. And that's why I said it's up to you. If you hit a panda right there on the third hand, you, all right, that's cool. I'm even or I'm up. I don't want to bet all the way through the tenth. I ain't gonna be disciplined. I ain't gonna stay committed. That's fine. Use your own discretion. Walk away, find a different table. See where the conditions met again, because I swear I've, we have five tables where I am where I come from, where I come from. Uh, <laughs> and it is awesome when I see it happening on all five or all four or, or three out of the two, you know, because I'm thinking, cool, if I would just boom, 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 nip, nitpick that betting at all those tables, I may have very well hit, I've hit those pandas and have come up. 
I'm at the point now where I'm like telling my coworkers, hey, you better holler at me and be like, yo, Vince, the blue tie condition is met. Come over here and bet. I don't care if I lose. I've seen this so many times happen and work and win that I'm I have the faith in the bet on winning. And like I said, when I go to the casino and I go to that table and I go, ooh, looks like panda. And it hits these these players look at me like, whoa, did the panda genius just come? <laughs> And of course, I've always said when I when I'm on the table dealing, I go, man, you know, when people bet huge on banker, and then you got the other big player betting huge on player, I always go, all right, you know, you can't root for one or the other because they're both playing. I just say, hey, may the best guesser win. So, if you want to make your guessing fun, discipline, minimize your losses, maximize your wins, check out this panda chase strategy, put it to action, find a table that'll allow you to bet one dollar and try it small. Just just try it small. It's still 25 to 1. You're still going to win 25 bucks off that $1 bet. You'll still be way up, just like you'd be up in this shoe. We're going to leave the math out of it like I mentioned. We're going to keep this video a little bit shorter than the rest. And shouts out to anybody that's subscribed in the past month or year. I've been slacking on making these videos. I want to get to it. Um, lastly, very lastly, check out some of the older content. It does reiterate the strategy. Talks about it proves it more uses the very first slide we talked about was the phone application forgot which baccarat game but it was just the baccarat it's, it's, it's just it's happening and it's happening in every baccarat game that i play easy baccarat or not that draw to eight is happening and that player tie is not it's not what's triggering it don't get me wrong it's just like i said you still, you still gotta get lucky gamble responsibly thank you for watching subscribe if you haven't already done so the last stuff i wanted i want to bother you with is if you're new to the game and you've got this far you're new to the channel i'm gonna go ahead and make future videos about how to deal this game out so you understand what's happening so you understand the hit schedule so you understand when you make your bet and you're not just watching cards being dealt out that you have no control over hitting or staying like you would in the common game of blackjack or spanish 21 so thank you for watching we'll see you guys next time on let's talk bach